Yeah. Great work, Kai. So for this one, I wrote down three times 10, three days a week. Let's do the next one, okay? Okay, Kai, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna do three times 10 of this one, three days a week. Let's go. Okay, so there's also three times 10? Yep. Three times 10, three days a week. Very good, Kai. So this one you're going to do... Three times 10, three days a week. Exactly. Now, does this look and sound familiar to you? Then let me tell you that there is more to exercise prescription than doing three times 10. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi, and welcome to Physio Tutors. Next to our ability to listen, validating concerns, and to provide education to our patients, exercise is one of our best interventions to help people with a physical complaint. However, effective implementation in practice is unsatisfactory. We have already discussed that many health professionals are not up to date on recommended physical activity guidelines and surveys on senior physiotherapists revealed that a majority of physios appear to have limited knowledge on exercise program design for optimal results. Hence why you hear three times 10, three times a week across gyms and clinics all around the world. It has become the default dose when prescribing exercises. Sure, three times 10 is better than zero times zero, but specificity matters in exercise prescription to achieve optimal outcomes. As a side note, we will disregard pain reduction as the outcome for this video as dosage for pain relief is still not that clear and many more factors are associated with pain relief than simply complying with strength training guidelines. As a rule of thumb for training with pain, we employ a simple traffic light system or is pain high, say a VAS 7 out of 10, we want to decrease the intensity to, for example, a 3. Our pain levels low, we can increase this intensity. But some patients may not even need a tailored exercise program at all, but for this video, we want to showcase how to make exercise prescription specific to your goals, whether that's to improve strength, power, hypertrophy, or muscular endurance. I assume that you have heard of one to five repetitions are needed to build strength, six to 12 repetitions to build hypertrophy, and anything beyond 12 repetitions is meant to build muscular endurance. However, it's not that simple. And research has actually shown that when we, for example, look at maximizing hypertrophy, the total volume of training is more important than adhering to a specific repetition range. But what's most crucial and what is missing in the three times 10, three days a week programming is intensity. Because even when low intensity training is performed until failure, that is at an intensity of 30% of one's one repetition maximum, it does not result in the same degree of muscle activation that occurs at moderate or high intensities, even when volume is matched. In rehab, I'd say many of us tend to shy away from prescribing higher intensity exercise to patients. This may be due to the fear of injury, not only from the patient's side, but also from a belief the therapist may hold, or simply because they don't know how to do it. But that would be like a doctor prescribing medicine without providing details on the dosage. From personal experience, we've heard many stories of patients with a seemingly trivial musculoskeletal problem who have had unsatisfactory results in the past that could, partially be explained due to chronic underloading. Our bodies, tissues, but also mind adapt to the stresses they are exposed to. If we want to instill robustness and resilience in our patients, we need appropriate intensity. There are several ways that we can gauge intensity, whether that's maximal or submaximal repetition maximum testing, using the Holton diagram, for example, ratings of perceived exertions, short RPE, during or after an exercise. You are probably familiar with the Borg scale for aerobic exercise or a more novel approach using repetitions in reserve 
also known as RIR. The latter may be a bit more difficult though to employ as it requires experience with the particular exercise to accurately estimate repetitions in reserve. In a re-up setting, we often have someone do a test set of a given exercise and then ask them to stop when they feel they have two to three repetitions left in the tank. Then we ask them to keep going to show them how accurate or not they were with the estimation on how close they were to failure. In practice, we prefer to use RPE or reps in reserve over a percentage of one's one repetition maximum as sticking to a set percentage can vary on a day-to-day -day basis. So 75% of your one RM may feel light on a day one is well rested, has little discomfort, but on another day where one maybe is stressed, underslept or feels more discomfort, this can feel closer to 90% rather than 75%. RPE or reps in reserve allows us to modulate the intensity on a day-to-day -day basis or even between sets and stay flexible with the weights in either direction, up or down, while focusing on creating the right stimulus. Now enough talking, so let's look at what is regarded as appropriate intensity with regards to training goals such as strength, hypertrophy or muscular endurance. A previously mentioned recent research into what makes a muscle grow has revealed that the total volume of training is more important than adhering to a specific rep range of say 6 to 12 repetitions, as is still believed by many. Loads that are heavy enough and performed with an adequately high volume will build muscle. Whether that's heavy 3 repetition maximum or moderate 10 RM doesn't seem to matter as far as hypertrophy is concerned. But there are a few things to consider. One is time. High repetition training takes less time than volume matched sets with very heavy loads. And the other is the nature of the exercise. Doing high repetition exercises closer to failure can be fine for exercises with a low biomechanical complexity and risk of injury, such as bicep curls for example or other isolation exercises, whereas doing the same with deadlifts or back squats can to be frank, quite uh, soul crushing. So for hypertrophy, we'd use a RIR based RPE of eight to 10, so zero to two reps left in the tank in a rep range between six to 12 for isolation exercises. And for compound lifts, such as the squat or bench press, we'd tend to stay in the RPE range of six to eight or a two to four rep in reserve. Strength or maximal strength in itself would mean that we should approach an RPE of 10 or zero reps in reserve. However, this is not necessarily desirable or could be detrimental in the rehab setting. Training to failure regularly can hamper gains in strength compared to performing only a moderate amount of volume at this range. Generally accepted are 80 to 100% of 1RM, which translates to intensities in the 1 to 6 RM range or 6 reps with 0 reps in reserve, 5 reps with 1 rep in reserve, 4 reps with 2 reps in reserve, or 3 reps with 3 reps in reserve. You get the deal. Let's look at muscular endurance, which is fairly similar in principle to hypertrophy training, but with a focus on developing fatigue resistance. So rest periods are shorter to stimulate faster interset recovery and training to failure with moderate loads is desired. So we aim for sets of more than 12 repetitions with an RPE of 9 to 10 or 0 to 1 reps in reserve. It has to be said though that these principles have been studied in novice and experienced lifters, but we feel confident in applying these same principles in a patient population as well, but adapting it to the individual in front of us depending on how symptoms behave. Because we also need to be specific with our rehab goals. Some patients may need to work more on strength to allow them to better cope with day-to-day -day tasks when lifting or moving objects at work or at home. For others, it's more about local muscle endurance to cope with static work environments or hypertrophy for those recovering from surgery or immobilization. And then there are all the other mental and physical benefits of exercise I haven't even talked about. But that's a topic for another video. Mm -hmm. All right.
thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. We have a host of online courses that each focus on specific pathologies guaranteed to help you provide the best possible management of each condition. Check them out on study.physiotutors.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Share this video with your colleagues. And as always, this was Andreas for Physio Tutors. I will see you in another video. Bye.